Palakeshin II IAST, Palakasin, R. C. 610–642 CE was the most famous ruler of the Chalukya dynasty of Atapi present-day Badami in Karnataka, India. During his reign, the Chalukya kingdom expanded to cover most of the Deccan region in peninsular India. A son of the Chalukya king Kirtivarman I, Palakeshin overthrew his uncle Mangalisha to gain control of the throne. He suppressed a rebellion by Apayika and Govinda, and decisively defeated the Kadambas of Banavasi in the south. The Alupas and the Gangas of Talakad recognized his suzerainty. He consolidated the Chalukya control over the western coast by subjugating the Mauryas of Konkana. His eyehole inscription also credits him with subjugating the Ladas, the Malavas, and the Guryaras in the north. The most notable military achievement of Palakeshin was his victory over the powerful northern emperor Harsha Vardhana, whose failure to conquer the Chalukya kingdom is attested by the Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang. In the east, Palakeshin subjugated the rulers of Dakshina Kosala and Kalinga. After defeating the Vishnukundina ruler, he appointed his brother Vishnu Vardhana as the governor of eastern Deccan. This brother later established the independent eastern Chalukya dynasty of Vengi. Palakeshin also achieved some successes against the Pallavas in the south, but was ultimately defeated, and probably killed, during an invasion by the Pallava king Narasimhavarman I. Palakeshin was a Vaishnavite, but was tolerant of other faiths, including Shaivism, Buddhism, and Jainism. He patronized several scholars, including Ravikirti, who composed his eyehole inscription. <laughs> Names and titles Two variants of Palakeshin's name appear in the Chalukya records, Pulakeshin IAST, Pulakeshin, and Pulakeshin IAST, Pulakeshin. Araya appears to have been another of his names. The Pedavaduguru inscription calls him Aryatiyadigal or Aryatiyadigal, and the Bijapur Mumbai inscription mentions the variant Araha. Historian K. V. Ramesh theorizes that Araya was the pre-coronation name of Palakeshin, Satishraya. Refuge of Truth, a hereditary Baruta epithet of Palakeshin, was commonly used as a substitute for his name in the dynasty's records. He was the dynasty's most celebrated ruler, because of which the subsequent rulers called their dynasty Satishraya Kula, family of Satishraya. The imperial titles of Palakeshin include Bhadaraka and Maharajadiraja, King of Great Kings. Besides, he also used the family epithets Sri Prithvi Vallabha, Vallabha, and Sri Vallabha. Palakeshin also assumed the title Parameshvara Supreme Lord, after defeating Harsha, as attested by his Bijapur Mumbai inscription, the Chinese traveller Xuanzang calls him Pu Lo Ki Shi. The Persian historian Al-Tabari calls him Paramesa or Pharmas, probably a Persian transcription of his title Parameshvara. <laughs> Early life Palakeshin was a son of the Chalukya king Kirtivarman I. When Kirtivarman died, Palakeshin appears to have been a minor, as Kirtivarman's younger brother Mangalisha became the next king. The inscriptions of the later Chalukyas of Kalyani, who claimed descent from the Chalukyas of Atapi, state that Mangalisha took upon himself the burden of administration because Palakeshin was a minor. However, these inscriptions also wrongly claim that Mangalisha returned the kingdom to Palakeshin when Palakeshin grew up, praising the Chalukya lineage for such exemplary behavior. This claim is contradicted by Palakeshin's own eyehole inscription, and appears to be a late attempt to gloss over Palakeshin's overthrow of Mangalisha. The exact details of the conflict between these two men are unclear, because the eyehole inscription describes it in a rather enigmatic way. It is possible that Mangalisha initially ruled as a regent, but later decided to usurp the throne. According to the eyehole inscription, Mangalisha was envious of Palakeshin, because Palakeshin was a favorite of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Therefore, Palakeshin decided to go into exile. Subsequently, Mangalisha's became weak on all sides as Palakeshin applied his gifts of good counsel and energy. Ultimately, Mangalisha had to abandon three things simultaneously, his attempt to secure the throne for his own son or his ability to perpetuate his own descent, his kingdom, and his own life. The above description suggests that when Palakeshin became an adult, Mangalisha rejected his claim to the throne and possibly appointed his own son as the heir apparent. 
Palakeshin went into exile, during which he must have planned an attack on Mangalisha. He ultimately defeated and killed Mangalisha. The undated Pettivaduguru inscription records Palakeshin's grant of the Elpatu Simbij village after his subjugation of Ranavikrama. According to one theory, this Ranavikrama was Mangalisha, who bore the title Ranavikrama, who was defeated by Mangalisha in a battle fought at Elpatu Simbij. However, another theory identifies Ranavikrama as a Bana king. Date of ascension Palakeshin's Hyderabad inscription is dated 613 CE Shaka year 534, and was issued during the third year of his reign, which suggests that he must have ascended the throne in c. 610–611 CE. The exact year of his ascension is debated among modern scholars. The 610–611 CE Goa Grant inscription, which refers to an unnamed Chalukya overlord titled Sri Prithvi Vallabha Maharaja, was probably issued during the reign of Palakeshin's predecessor Mangalisha. It is dated to the Shaka year 532, assuming it was issued after 532 years of the Shaka era had expired. The date of issue was 4 January 611 CE. However, if we assume that it was issued when the 532 road year of the Shaka era was current, it can be dated to 5 July 610 CE. Based on this inscription, the end of Mangalisha's reign is variously dated to 610 CE or 611 CE. The matter is complicated by the Maruchuru inscription, which is dated to Palakeshin's eighth regnal year, and was issued on the occasion of a solar eclipse on the new moon day of the Jayishtha month. According to modern calculations, this solar eclipse took place on 21 May 616 CE, which would mean that Palakeshin ascended the throne in 609 CE. <laughs> <laughs> Military conquests After Mangalisha's death, Palakeshin appears to have faced opposition from multiple rivals, including those who were loyal to Mangalisha and those who wanted to take advantage of the turmoil resulting from the Chalukya War of Succession. The Ihole inscription declares that, "...the whole world was enveloped in the darkness that was the enemies." Palakeshin subjugated these enemies, and established the Chalukyas as the dominant power in the Indian peninsula. Apayika and Govinda The Ihole inscription suggests that two rulers named Apayika and Govinda rebelled against Palakeshin. The identity of these rulers is uncertain, but they are said to have approached the core Chalukya territory from the north of the Bhimarathi modern Bhima river in present-day Maharashtra. According to historian K. A. Nilakanta Sastri, the way they are mentioned in the inscription suggests that they were military adventurers and not from a royal background. However, according to historian Durga Prasad Dikshit, their names suggest that they may have belonged to a Rashtrakuta branch, which was distinct from the imperial Rashtrakutas of Manyaheta. This branch may have become subordinate to the Chalukyas after facing invasions from the Nala and Mauryas of Konkan, and later rebelled, taking advantage of the conflict between Palakeshin and Mangalisha. According to the Ihole inscription, Palakeshin adopted the policy of Beta divide and conquer, and bestowed favors upon Govinda while alienating Apayika. Govinda became his ally, and Apayika was defeated. Topic. Recapture of Banavasi Palakeshin's predecessors had subjugated the Kadambas of Banavasi, but the Kadambas no longer recognized the Chalukya suzerainty during his reign. Palakeshin marched against them, and besieged their capital of Banavasi. The Ihole inscription suggests that the Kadambas put up a strong resistance, but were ultimately defeated. The Kadamba ruler at this time was probably Bogivarmant. Palakeshin ended the Kadamba dynasty, and annexed their territory to his empire. He divided this territory among his vassals. The major part of the Kadamba kingdom was granted to the Alupas under the name Kadamba Mandala. The Nagarakonda division of Banavasi was given to the Sendrakas. Alupas <laughs> According to the Ihole inscription, Palakeshin subjugated the Alupas, who had earlier served as Kadamba vassals. However, according to the Chalukya inscriptions, the Alupas had already been subjugated by Palakeshin's predecessors. 
Therefore, it appears that the Ihole inscription simply refers to Palakeshin reaffirming the Chalukya suzerainty over the Alupas. Another possibility is that the Alupas had not been completely subdued by the Palakeshin's predecessors. The location of the Kor Alupa territory during Palakeshin's period is not certain. Alupas are known to have been ruling in the Dakshina Kannada region of Karnataka for several centuries, but some scholars believe that their capital was located at Humcha in the Shimoga district. After subjugating the Kadambas, Palakeshin assigned a major part of the former Kadamba territory to his Alupa vassal, who according to historian Morais, may have been Kandavaramarasa, if Aluka is considered a variant of Alupa. The Maruchara inscription suggests that the Alupa vassals of Palakeshin also ruled over the Gunter district in present-day Andhra Pradesh. According to this inscription, the Aluka ruler Ganasagara, who was a Chalukya vassal, was appointed to govern this region. The 692 CE Saurab inscription describes Gunasagara's son Chitra Vahana as an Alupa, which suggests that Aluka is a variant of Alupa. Gangas of Talakad The Ihole inscription credits Palakeshin with subjugating the Gangas of Talakad, who had matrimonial ties with the Kadambas. The Mahakuta pillar inscription of his predecessor Mangalisha states his father Kirtivarman also subjugated the Gangas. It is possible that the Gangas accepted the Chalukya suzerainty during Kirtivarman's reign, but subsequently gave up this allegiance taking advantage of the war of succession between Mangalisha and Palakeshin. After Palakeshin's victory over the Kadambas, the Gangas again accepted the Chalukya suzerainty, possibly without any military conflict. The Ganga ruler Durvinita married his daughter to Palakeshin. She was the mother of Palakeshin's son Vikramaditya I. The Gangas probably hoped to gain Chalukya support against the Pallavas, who had captured the Kanganadu region from them. The Gangas subsequently defeated the Pallava ruler Kataveti of Kanchi. Mauryas of Konkana Palakeshin's father Kirtivarman had defeated the Mauryas of Konkana modern Konkan, who ruled in the coastal region of present-day Goa and Maharashtra. The Mauryas acknowledged the Chalukya suzerainty during Mangalisha's reign, but seemed to have declared independence during the Chalukya War of Succession. After consolidating his power in southern Deccan, Palakeshin successfully besieged the Mauryan capital Puri, which is variously identified as Garapuri Elephanta or Rajapuri near Hanhira. Ladas, <laughs> Malavas, and Griyaras The Ihole inscription states that Palakeshin subjugated the Ladas, the Malavas, and the Guryaras, who were the northern neighbors of the Chalukyas. Historian Durga Prasad Dixit theorizes that these kingdoms may have accepted Palakeshin's suzerainty without a military conflict, when faced with an invasion from the northern king Harshavardhana. Alternatively, it is possible that these three rulers accepted Mangalisha's suzerainty after his victory over the Kalachuris, and the Ihole inscription simply refers to Palakeshin reaffirming the Chalukya suzerainty over them. The Lata region (present-day southern Gujarat) was formerly under the control of the Kalachuris, who had been defeated by Mangalisha. Palakeshin, who appears to have annexed Lata to the Chalukya kingdom, placed it under the governorship of a member of the Chalukya family. The rule of the Chalukya governor Vijaya Varma Raja over Lata is attested by his 643 CE Kedah copper plate inscription. The Malavas ruled in and around the present day Malwa Malava region in central India. According to the Chinese traveller Xuanzang, Malava Mola po was an independent kingdom, but the records of the Maitraka dynasty suggest that the Maitrakas controlled at least a part of the Malava territory. Thus, the Malavas may have been Maitraka vassals or independent rulers before they accepted Palakeshin's suzerainty. The Guryaras were most probably the Guryaras of Lata or Baruch, and the Gurhara ruler who accepted Palakeshin's suzerainty was probably Dada II. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Victory over Harsha. The most notable military achievement of Palakeshin was his victory over the powerful emperor Harsha Vardhana, who ruled over much of northern India. The inscriptions of Palakeshin's successors prominently mention this victory even when they ignore his other military achievements. <laughs> <laughs> Date 
The date of the war between Harsha and Palakeshin has been debated by modern scholars. The Candlegown copper plate inscription, dated to Palakeshin's fifth regnal year c. 615 CE, mentions the conflict, but this inscription is regarded as spurious by modern scholars. Some scholars, such as K. V. Ramesh and K. A. Nilakanta Sastri, date the battle to c. 612 CE or before, based on the 612–613 CE Hyderabad inscription of Palakeshin. This inscription boasts that Palakeshin defeated a king who had fought a hundred battles presumably Harsha. The later Chalukya inscriptions, dating from the reign of Vikramaditya I onwards, mention Palakeshin's victory over Harsha using similar expressions. This early date for the war is also supported by the writings of Xuanzang, who states that Harsha fought wars for six years, and then ruled in peace for thirty years. Scholars Pradeep S. Sohoni and Srinand L. Bapat date the battle to the winter of 618 619 CE. These scholars note that the Bijapur Mumbai Grant inscription, dated to 4 April 619 CE, mentions Palakeshin's victory over Harsha, which proves that the conflict definitely took place sometime before this date. The earlier Sitara inscription of Palakeshin's brother Vishnu Vardhana, issued during his eighth regnal year c. 618 CE, does not mention the conflict. Based on this, Sohoni and Bapat theorize that the conflict took place between November 618 CE and February 619 CE. Some earlier scholars, such as D. Devahuti dated the conflict to 630s CE, but this is no longer considered correct after the publication of the Bijapur Mumbai inscription in 2017. Cause of the war The cause for the war between Harsha and Palakeshin is not certain. Historian K. A. Nilakanta Sastri suggests that Harsha's growing influence may have driven the Ladas, the Malavas, and the Guryaras to accept Palakeshin's suzerainty. Historian Durga Prasad Dixit adds that these three kingdoms are known to have been enemies of Harsha's father Prabhakara Vardhana, as attested by Harsha's court poet Bana. This enmity probably continued during the reign of Harsha. The Malava king played a role in the murder of Harsha's predecessor Raja Vardhana, and also killed Harsha's brother in law, the Malkari ruler Graha Varman. The Gurhara ruler Dada II aided the Maitraka dynasty against Harsha. When Harsha decided to take action against these three kingdoms, their rulers probably sought protection of Palakeshin. Palakeshin may have granted asylum to Harsha's adversaries, according to scholars Pradeep S. Sohoni and Srinand L. Bapat. The Malavas mentioned in the Chalukya record were the later Guptas who controlled the Malwa region. The expansion of the Maitraka influence in the Malwa region must have attracted Harsha's attention. The Maitraka ruler Shiladitya I may have been sympathized with Palakeshin's cause during the latter's northern campaign against the Ladas, the Malavas, and the Guryaras. This situation ultimately resulted in a conflict between Harsha and Palakeshin. Another possibility is that Harsha decided to take advantage of the turmoil resulting from the conflict between Mangalisha and Palakeshin, and invaded the Chalukya kingdom. During his march against Palakeshin, Harsha advanced up to the Narmada River before being forced to retreat. Result The eyehole inscription of Palakeshin boasts the Harsha mirth of Harsha melted away by fear, as his elephants fell in the battle. The only other inscription from his reign that mentions this battle is the Bijapur Mumbai inscription. Harsha's court poet Bana does not mention this conflict in his biography Harsha Karita, presumably to avoid portraying his patron in a negative light. However, Palakeshin's success against Harsha is confirmed by other independent sources. The Chinese traveler Xuanzang, who calls Palakeshin's kingdom Mo Ho La Cha, the Chinese transcription of Maharashtra, provides the evidence of Palakeshin's success against Harsha. Xuanzang states that Shiladitya that is, Harsha, had conquered the nations from east to west, and had marched with his army to remote parts of India. Only the people of Mo Ho La Cha had refused to accept his suzerainty. 
Xuanzang further states that Harsha gathered troops from different parts of his kingdom, summoned his best commanders, and himself led the army to punish the people of Mo Hola Cha, but could not subjugate them. The Rashtrakutas, who ultimately overthrew the Chalukyas several years after Palakeshin's death, also boast that they defeated the dynasty that claimed victory over Harshavardhana, thus indirectly confirming Palakeshin's achievement. The Ihole inscription poetically states that Palakeshin's elephants had to avoid the neighborhood of the Vindhya Mountains beside the Narmada River, because as they, by their bulk, rivaled the mountains. Historian K. A. Nilakanta Sastri interprets to mean that Palakeshin did not send his elephant forces into the difficult Vindhya terrain and guarded the passes with infantry. According to P. S. Sohoni and S. L. Bapat, the inscription suggests that Palakeshin's army subsequently tried to cross the Vindhyas, in a bid to invade Harsha's kingdom, but was unsuccessful, which may explain why only two inscriptions from Palakeshin's reign mention his conflict with Harsha. Dakshina Kosala and Kalinga The Ihole inscription states that the rulers of Koshala and Kalinga accepted Palakeshin's suzerainty without offering any resistance. Koshala here can be identified as Dakshina Kosala, present-day Chhattisgarh in western Odisha, which was probably under the Pandavamshi rule. The Ihole inscription does not mention the name of the subjugated ruler, but historian D. C. Sirkar theorizes that he may have been the Pandavamshi king Mahashivagupta Balarjuna, the name of the ruler of Kalinga, which includes parts of present-day Odisha and northern Andhra Pradesh, is not certain either. Historian Durga Prasad Dikshit suggests that he was probably a member of the Eastern Ganga dynasty. Historian K. A. Nilakanta Sastri suggests that he may have been a Vishnukundina feudatory. Vishnukundina dynasty According to the Ihole inscription and the Maruchuru inscription, Palakeshin invaded and captured Pishtapura modern Pithapuram in Andhra Pradesh. The Maruchuru inscription suggests that this event took place around or before 617–618 CE. The Ihole inscription states that subsequently, a fierce battle was fought near Kunala Lake identified with modern Kalaru Lake, whose water turned red with the blood of those killed in the war. These inscriptions do not name Palakeshin's rival in these conflicts, but modern scholars identify him as a king of the Vishnukundina dynasty, which ruled in Andhra Pradesh. Palakeshin probably subjugated Vishnukundina vassals during his eastern campaign in Kalinga, which may have brought him in conflict with the Vishnukundina dynasty. Palakeshin conquered the Vishnukundina kingdom, located in the lower Godavari Krishna valley, and appointed his younger brother Kuba Vishnu Vardhana as the governor of the newly conquered territory. The Chalukya conquest in this region is corroborated by Vishnu Vardhana's 631 CE Koparam copper plate inscription, which records a land grant in the Karma Rashtra region of present day Andhra Pradesh. The Vishnukundina ruler defeated by Palakeshin was probably Indravarman. He appears to have ultimately accepted Palakeshin's suzerainty, and was allowed to rule as a Chalukya vassal. Palakeshin assigned some of the newly conquered territories to his own feudatories. For example, the Maruchuru inscription states that the Aluka ruler Ganasagara, a Chalukya vassal, came from Mangalapura identified with modern Mangalagiri in Gunter district to Kalora after undergoing several hardships. Xuanzang's <laughs> <laughs> visit The Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang visited Palakeshin's kingdom in 641–642 CE. He calls the Chalukya kingdom, Mo Hola Cha, the Chinese transcription of Maharashtra, and corroborates Palakeshin's success against Harsha see above. He had visited the Pallava kingdom before arriving in the Chalukya kingdom, but he doesn't mention any conflict between the two kingdoms, presumably because he was not aware of major political changes or because his main interest was Buddhism rather than politics. Xuanzang describes Palakeshin Pola Keshi, as a man of farsighted resource and astuteness who extends kindness to all. The king's subjects were tall and sturdy in nature and Proud and carefree by nature. Grateful for kindness and revengeful for injustice. They preferred death to disloyalty, and called for a duel if they or their families were insulted. According to Xuanzang, the king was warlike and loved military arts because he was a Kshatriya by birth. 
His well-disciplined troops comprised several thousands of men, and several hundreds of elephants. The elephants, who were intoxicated with wine before battles, were used to break the enemy's front line. When his generals were defeated, they were not punished, but were humiliated by being ordered to wear women's dresses. The soldiers who lost a battle would commit suicide as a matter of honor. According to Xuanzang, the kingdom's capital, not named by Xuanzang, was situated to the east of a large river, around 1,000 li from Barukacha, modern Baruch. This description does not fit the Shalukya capital Vatapi, modern Badami. Modern scholars identify the city mentioned by Xuanzang as Nashik, although this identification is not conclusive. It is possible that Xuanzang spent some time in Nashik, which was an important center of Buddhism, and mistook it as the kingdom's capital. Xuanzang mentions that there were five stupas in and around the capital city. These stupas had been built by the earlier king Ashoka, and were several hundred feet high. Around 5,000 Buddhist monks lived in over 100 monasteries in the kingdom. In particular, Xuanzang describes a large monastery identified with the Ajanta Caves by modern scholars. Xuanzang adds that the kingdom also had temples of heretics who smeared dust on their bodies. Topic: <laughs> War with the Pallavas and death. The Pallavas were the southern neighbors of the Chalukyas. The Vishnukundans were their allies at the time, and Palakeshin's subjugation of the Vishnukundans brought him in conflict with the Pallava king. The Chalukyas and the Pallavas fought several battles without conclusive results. The Ihole inscription states that the Pallava ruler opposed the rise of Palakeshin, who caused the enemy's splendor to be obscured by the dust of his army, and forced the enemy to take shelter behind the walls of the Pallava capital Kanchipuram. The Kashakuti inscription of the Pallavas states that their king Mahendravarman defeated an unnamed enemy at Palalora modern Pulalar. These two accounts appear to refer to the same battle, which must have been inconclusive. The Pallava army was probably forced to retreat to Kanchipuram, but inflicted enough damage on the Chalukya army to force Palakeshin to retreat to Vatapi. The undated Pedavaduguru inscription records Palakeshin's grant of the Elpatu Simbij village in Bana Raja Vishaya. Bana King's Province. After the subjugation of Ranavikrama. Assuming that Ranavikrama was a Bana king, it appears that Palakeshin defeated the Banas. An alternative theory identifies Ranavikrama as Mangalisha. See early life section above. The Banas appear to have been Pallava feudatories before their submission to Palakeshin, as suggested by the name of the inscription's engraver, Mahendra Pallavachari. Palakeshin's subjugation of a Pallava feudatory must have renewed his conflict with the Pallavas. The Ihole inscription suggests that Palakeshin won over the Chola, the Shara, and the Pandya kings as his allies in his struggle against the Pallavas. He marched towards Kanchipuram, but the Pallava inscriptions suggest that he suffered reverses in battles fought at Pariyala, Suramara, and Manamangala, near Kanchipuram. The Pallavas, during the reign of Narasimha Varman I, ultimately besieged the Chalukya capital Vatapi. Palakeshin was probably killed, when a Pallava force led by Shiratandar Puranhoti captured Vatapi in c. 642–643 CE. The Pallava occupation of Vatapi is attested by an inscription found at the Malakarjanadeva temple in Badami, dated to the 13th regnal year of Narasim Varman. Succession <laughs> <laughs> By 641 CE, during Palakeshin's lifetime, his brother Vishnu Vardhana had carved out an independent kingdom in the eastern part of the Chalukya Empire, resulting in the establishment of the Chalukya dynasty of Vengi. According to one theory, this arrangement may have happened with the approval of Palakeshin, who did not want his brother to wage a war of succession like Mangalisha. Palakeshin had multiple sons, and the order of succession after him is not clear from the available historical evidence. Adityavarman is attested by his Kurnul inscription, which describes him as a powerful ruler and gives him imperial titles. Historian T. V. Mahalingam theorizes that Adityavarman was simply a former name of Vikramaditya I. However, historian D. P. Dixit disputes this identification, and believes that Adityavarman succeeded Palakeshin, and in turn, was succeeded by his son Abhinavitya. Chandraditya is attested by the Nerul and Kakar grant inscriptions of his wife Vijaya Bhadarika. These inscriptions gives him imperial titles, and accord the titles of a chief queen to his wife. 
However, in the royal genealogy section, they introduce his younger brother Vikramaditya I after his father Palakeshin, describing Vikramaditya as the restorer of the Chalukya rule. Some historians, such as D.C. Sirkar, believe that Chandraditya served Vikramaditya as a feudatory. Others, such as D.P. Dixit, believe that Chandraditya held the throne after Abhinavaditya, and that the Nerul inscription was issued after his death when his wife served as the regent for their minor son. Ranaraga Varman is attested by the Hanur inscription dated to the 16th regnal year of his younger brother Vikramaditya. The inscription states that Ranaraga Varman's daughter was the wife of the Ganga prince Madhava, a subordinate of Vikramaditya. Vikramaditya I restored the Chalukya power, and recaptured Vatapi from the Pallavas. Dharashraya Jayasimha Varman, a younger brother of Vikramaditya, is attested by the 671 CE Navsari Grant inscription. <laughs> Extent of the kingdom The Chinese pilgrim Xuanzang attests that Palakeshin ruled an extensive, militarily powerful and economically prosperous kingdom through several loyal vassals. The Ihole inscription states that Palakeshin's kingdom was bound by the oceans on three sides, suggesting that he ruled a vast portion of the Indian peninsula to the south of the Vindhyas. However, there is no evidence that he was able to annex the extreme southern kingdoms of the Cholas, the Keralas, Cheras, and the Pandyas to his empire. After his victory over Harsha, Palakeshin appears to have acquired control of a large part of western Deccan to the south of the Narmada River. The Ihole inscription states that he gained control of the three Maharashtras, which included 99,000 villages. The identity of these three Maharashtras is not certain according to historian dc sarkar they may have been the maharashtra proper a large part of present day maharashtra konkana and karnataka palakeshin could not administer this large kingdom centrally and therefore ruled through governors from the chalukya family and loyal vassals who included the rulers defeated by him the sendraka prince sena nanda raja ruled the konkana and neighboring areas as his loyal feudatory the family of Allah Shakti ruled the Khandesh and neighboring areas as his vassal, as attested by the Abona and Kasare inscriptions. After defeating the Vishnukundans, Palakeshin acquired control of a large part of the eastern Deccan region, extending from Vishakhapatnam in north to Nellar and Gunter in the south. Palakeshin appointed his younger brother Vishnu Vardhana, who had earlier served as his governor of the Velvola country, as the governor of Vengi in eastern Deccan. Vishnu Vardhana acknowledges Palakeshin's suzerainty in his 631 CE Koparam inscription, but asserts himself as an independent ruler in his 641 CE Chirapali inscription. After Palakeshin's death, the Chalukya governor Vijaya Varman, who ruled in the Lata region in southern Gujarat, also seems to have asserted his independence. Vijaya Varman's 643 CE Keda inscription records a land grant without any reference to a Chalukya overlord. Foreign relations According to the 9th-century Persian historian Al-Tabari, Palakeshin Farmus maintained diplomatic relations with the Sasanian ruler Khosrau II of present-day Iran. Palakeshin sent expensive presents and letters to Khusro and his sons. During the 26th regnal year of the Sasanian monarch, in the 1870s, architectural historian James Ferguson theorized that a painting at the Ajanta Cave 1 depicted a Sasanian embassy to Palakeshin's court. The painting depicts several figures in foreign dress. Ferguson identified the dress as Sasanian, and proposed that the Sasanian king send a return embassy to the Chalukya kingdom. This theory was widely accepted by other scholars, but is no longer considered correct. The painting actually depicts a scene from the Maha Sudarsana Jataka. <inaudible> Religion Palakeshin was a Vaishnavite, as attested by the loner copper plate inscription which calls him a Parama Bhagavata. Devotee of Vishnu and the Pimpalner copper plate inscription which states that he belonged to the line of Vishnu. Several of his inscriptions begin with salutations to Vishnu, and bear seals with emblems that feature Varaha, an incarnation of Vishnu. He was tolerant of other faiths. The construction of the Shaivite shrines now called the Upper Shivalaya, the Lower Shivalaya, and Malajiti Shivalaya, started during his reign. The Chinese Buddhist pilgrim Xuanzang mentions that there were over 100 Buddhist monasteries in his kingdom, over 5,000 monks, both Mahayana and Hinayana, lived in these monasteries. 
The Meguti Jain temple at Vatapi was also built during his reign, by Ravakirti, who composed the Ihole inscription engraved on the wall of this temple. Cultural activities The Ihole inscription of Palakeshin states that he was generous in "...bestowing gifts and honours on the brave and the learned." The inscription's composer Ravakirti, a court poet of Palakeshin, describes himself as an equal of the famous Sanskrit poets Basa and Kalidasa. Inscriptions Following inscriptions from Palakeshin's reign have been discovered The Yekari Rock inscription, which was probably issued in Palakeshin's first regnal year, contains land records in certain towns said to be owned by the god Mahadeva. The Hyderabad copper plate grant inscription is dated to the Shaka year 532 expired, and was issued during Palakeshin's third regnal year. It was issued during the solar eclipse on the Amavasya of the Bhadrapada month, which corresponds to 23 July 613. It records a village grant. The Maruchuru grant inscription records the grant of the Maruchuru village at the instance of the Aluka vassal ruler, and notices the occupation of Pishtapura. The Satara grant inscription of Vishnu Vardhana refers to him as the crown prince. The Loner Nashik district inscription is dated to the year 552 of an unspecified calendar era, which must be the Shaka era. It registers grant of the Govayanaka village to a Brahmana named Dhamma Dikshita. The Koparam copper plate inscription, dated to Palakeshin's 21st regnal year, records the grant of a village in Karma Rashtra region to a Brahmana. The Ihole Prashasti inscription, composed by Palakeshin's court poet Ravikirti, records the construction of a Janendra temple by Ravikirti, and lists Palakeshin's military achievements. The undated Tumayanaru grant inscription of Palakeshin bestows the title Paramaveshvara on him. The Chiplin copper plate inscription record the grant of the Amravatavaka village in Avaretika Vishaya province to a Brahmana named Maheshvara. It refers to Palakeshin's maternal uncle and vassal king Srivalaba Sena Nanda Raja, who belonged to the Sendraka dynasty. The Nerul inscription. The fragmentary Badami rock inscription refers to the victorious metropolis of Vatapi. The Hyarbidri stone inscription records a land grant by Taraka. A Kannada language inscription from Bellary district specifies the land measure and the coin to be used at Kurungodu. The undated Pedavaduguru Ishvara temple stone inscription records Palakeshin's grant of the Elpatu Simbij village after his subjugation of Ranavikrama. The defeated ruler was probably a king of the Bana dynasty, alternatively, he may be identified with Mangalisha, who bore the title Ranavikrama. The Bijapur Mumbai copper plate grant inscription records a land grant to Nagasharman of Kaushika Gotra, and includes a prashasti praise of the dynasty and its kings. The granted land was located in the Brahmana Vedavya villages situated on the banks of the Godavari River identified with modern Brahmangan and Wadavali, east of Pathan, in Aurangabad district. The copper plates were purchased by Raghuvir Pai of Mumbai from a scrap vendor of Bijapur in the 1990s. The inscription was unreadable because of corrosion, but Srinand L. Bapat of Bandarkar Oriental Research Institute cleaned it and published it in 2017. It is written in Sanskrit language and inscribed in a southern variety of the Brahmi script. It was issued on the occasion of a lunar eclipse on a full moon day in the Vishaka month of Palakeshin's ninth regnal year, which corresponds to 4 April 619 CE. Following inscriptions are attributed to Palakeshin's reign, but are considered spurious by modern scholars. The Candlegown copper plate inscription, dated to Palakeshin's fifth regnal year, records the grant of the Pirajipa village on Ravati Island. It is considered spurious because its script features irregular characters and its language is very inaccurate. Additionally, its seal and opening matter are different from other Shalukya inscriptions, and it contains a faulty description of Palakeshin. The Lakshmeshvara inscription records the grant of a field to the Chaitya of Shanka Janendra. It is considered spurious because of late script and irregular dating. The Pimpalner copper plate inscription, considered spurious for the same reasons as the Lakshmeshvara inscription, records the grant of the Pipalanagara to Nagarasvami Dikshita. <laughs> 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 
Topic See also History of South India Sivagami and Sabadam, a historical novel featuring Palakeshin II Imadi Pulakeshi film, a Kannada language film based on the life of Palakeshin II